guys we made it out to xrp today as you can see it's really hot out here but uh we got the car out here so this track is a lot better than uh amarillo where we were so we're gonna be able to put a lot more to it early so uh, i've got a fairly conservative tune-up in it i think for the uh, first pass uh, but it is quite a bit more aggressive than we had in amarillo so let's see what we can do So as you can see, spun right off the hit there. I believe that was a 590 at like 135. I uh, lost the slip or possibly just threw it away. I wasn't too excited about that one. Uh, we assumed it was just the track surface causing the spin. So I uh, left it the same and they uh, did a little bit more prep and we decided to line up a little bit out of the groove in some of the more fresh glue. And I also added a little bit up top because I did turn the dome pressure down a little bit up top from Amarillo just in case it made more boost with the much better air, which it, uh, it seemed to be pretty close to Amarillo. So we turned it back up some and uh, here's the next pass. show you guys why the car actually spun which unfortunately i didn't figure out until afterwards editing looking at the footage and slowing it down but if you look carefully you will see the tire deforms a lot whenever i leave the line and then it actually goes into a tire shake and that causes the spin so what i needed to do here was add more tire pressure and then i would have been able to leave as hard as i was trying to leave and it would have taken it and uh would have been good to go unfortunately I didn't catch that at the track and just ended up turning it down, which you will see the next pass. I had it real soft early just to try and get down the track. Huge thanks to Brooks from DIY Garage Texas. I will link his channel. He is the one that got this video and uh, a lot of the other clips that you see are from him. So shout out to him. Make sure you go check out his channel and subscribe. slip from that last one so as you can see it was really lazy early but we made it down and got some data so happy with that so decided to ramp it in sooner of course and uh, leave on about the same off the hit and see what it'll do job of filming I don't think I filmed anything in between passes but that last pass you seen there uh, I'll put the slip up that was a 5007 at uh, I think it's 1447 so uh, that pass and uh, the pass before that uh, were both new best mile per hours and uh, that last pass is actually takes back the uh, 4.8 record for mile per hour because uh, my ET still stands at 495 in the eighth mile uh, but the mile per hour actually did get beat, uh, I think a couple months ago, um, a guy named Steve Tyler, 
Uh, he's got a purple, uh, I believe it's like a 70s Camaro. Uh, I'm possibly getting that wrong, but um, he actually went a 498 at 143, uh, where I had gone 140.8. So it took the mile per hour from me, but we just took it back right there. So uh, that's good to see. This thing is making a lot of power with that mile per hour. It's just getting it to leave right. Um, unfortunately, I think we're kind of battling me not knowing the car yet. We'll uh, make one more pass, uh, probably just one more, we'll see. But we're gonna give it some more early. Uh, I'm gonna leave it the same. Actually, I'm gonna turn it up just slightly up top just because I wanna see 145 out of it. And uh, we're gonna put it in earlier. We're leaving it really close to the same on the hit just because the starting line right there seems to be the issue. But uh, once I'm, you know, 30 feet out or so, it seems like it's pretty solid. So we're gonna put some more to it um, and we're gonna be all in probably around 0 0.8, 0 0.9 seconds, and we'll see if it'll see if it'll make it down through there. So, let's see what we can do. See if we can crack this thing back into the fours. And uh, that's actually right there is my second fastest pass ever, though, because the old car, the best pass was a 505, and then I went to 495. So, uh, it's doing really well. I'm just I'm getting a little bit frustrated just because of the just me not quite having it figured out yet. But I really shouldn't be. This is you know third time out with this car, so. Uh, I should be happier than I am, but you know how that goes. You always want more and uh, just want to go really fast, really quickly. But uh, we'll see what we can do on this next one and see if we can crack back into the fours. Also, uh, I ended up shredding the alternator belt, which I do have an extra one at home. I didn't bring it. Uh, so I'll have to figure out what's going on there. Uh, maybe an alignment issue, but I'll show you guys that real quick. just gonna run it and see if it uh see if it'll work um it didn't seem like it was charging real well but i think it was charging some we're charging it up right now while we sit here and wait for it to cool down so we'll see what it'll do So I'm gonna put the slip up from that last one that was a 488 at 146 So that is the new stock bottom end 4.8 record right there mile per hour and ET um, It went a 119 60 foot there. So uh, much happier with that. That's much closer to where we need to be still not um, Satisfied with that um, That tells you how fast I plan on going with this thing uh, especially to the 60 foot, but the track has definitely come around a lot. So um, Happy about that for sure um, would have really sucked to drive this far and not really get any good 60 foot data um, so anyways uh, I didn't change a whole lot I just uh, I just took the little timing retard that I had out of it and uh, yeah we're gonna I also put the boost in just slightly faster but I kept it the same at the peak so let's see if we can get a little bit farther into the uh, one teen 60 foots and 
a little bit farther into the 480s, but uh, I'm super happy with that. Um, hopefully I can get the GoPro from uh, Brooks over here. He uh, had his GoPro in the car and I was definitely really fired up after that pass. But anyways, uh, see what this one will do and uh, this will probably be the last pass of the night. So we'll see. So on this pass, we ran into the same tire pressure issue as earlier. We just happened to do it 20 or 30 feet out instead of on the hit. I kept bringing in power sooner and sooner, and I got to the point here where it just overpowered the amount of air that I had in the tire uh, about that far out and went into the spin. If you look closely at the track surface, you can see where it was starting to pull the contact patch up, and uh, then it went into the spin shortly after that. So we left the tune-up the same, added a pound of air in the tires, and uh, hot-lapped it for another pass since the track was closing shortly. <laughs> guys so that was the last pass of the night we happened to go a 489 at 145.5 there we did go slightly quicker to the 60 foot when a 119.0 versus the 119.4 from before uh, i didn't put a whole lot more in it um, i just took the timing retard out and put the boost in slightly quicker and it was a very small timing retard so it didn't make a huge difference and then i believe the uh, little bit that we lost on the top end was due to the car being hot because we did hot lap it there um, very quickly in order to get one more pass before the end of the night but uh, I'm not upset with that at all uh, backed up the previous time and also uh, with the stuff that we learned from this first outing I definitely could go much quicker the next time so I'm looking forward to that and also we happen to beat the record in perfect timing because the next day uh, Steve Tyler the guy that I mentioned earlier uh, took his car back out and he actually went to XRP as well and I'll show you the pass that he made <laughs> As you can see, he made a killer pass there, and that actually would have been the new stock bottom end 4.8 record if I hadn't set it the night before. So he went a 491 there. I believe it was just under 143 miles per hour, and he did have a significantly better 60 foot than I did. Um, so yeah, we were lucky that we had some of that uh, extra power out the back to uh, get a little bit quicker of a time, but he is right there. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get these issues worked out and uh, take the new stuff that we've learned and get back out there and set the record deeper or uh, we're going to get passed up so also huge thanks to everybody that 
uh, played a part in making this build happen. Uh, some of the biggest ones, uh, Hughes Performance with the converter transmission uh, parts and stuff like that and uh, just a lot of the knowledge. As you guys can see, the converter is working amazing. Uh, keeping RPM up high, keeping it away from making too much torque, and just making my job a lot easier and just keeping it in the average, keeping the average power up because it's staying right around where the engine is making power. So. That is uh, probably one of the biggest parts in making this thing run so well, in my opinion. As uh, you guys know, the last record was set, I was uh, just under 40 pounds of boost, and now I'm just just over 30 pounds, and it's uh, making a lot more power and has a, a lot higher mile per hour, so I'm super happy with that. Uh, Wilkes Performance, those heads are working well. The uh, Force Induction's Turbo, it's just killer not even trying at this point. I believe back pressure is 4 PSI lower than boost and it keeps getting farther away as I turn it up. So that thing is just crazy. It just wants more and more. Um, and yeah, uh, anybody else that I forgot, I'm sure I'm forgetting plenty. Uh, low dollar motorsports, they were a, uh, a big help as well. As you can see, there's shock sensors and stuff in the data overlays and all that. So uh, yeah, anybody else I forgot, I apologize, but uh, super thankful for everybody that helped make this build happen. And I'm super excited with how well it's doing already. So I can't wait to get back out there and turn it up some more and see what this thing is really capable of. So make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll see you guys in the next one.